Well, welcome everyone to First Tuesdays, which is a continuing education uh, event brought, uh, presented by the Office of the Secretary of State, specifically the Washington State Library. And today, um, I'm your facilitator, Carolyn Peterson, and uh, we have technical support by uh, Jer Jeremy Strell and uh, Joe Oliver, and they have, as you can see in the um, participants panel, they have their phone number right next to them. And so if you uh, have any technical difficulties during the program, if you can also email them, or you can just call them directly. And they're very familiar with how to get you back onto the Blackboard system. So uh, don't hesitate to take advantage of them. Then um, we do want to acknowledge the Institute of Museum and Library Services. They are the ones that provide our funding so that we can bring these programs to you. So um, we get our funding, of course, from the federal government via the Museum of uh, Institute of Museum and Library Services. And of course, we are part of the Office of the Secretary of State here at Washington State. So um, already, I can see that uh, he has taken care of uh, this. And I think we know where Diane is from. And uh, we welcome Janet. I'm glad you were able to join us to hear this about tips and tricks for overdrive. And then we ask that you stay around for like, literally, it's a 30-second survey. At the very end, we're trying to uh, fulfill the requirements from the uh, Institute of Museum and Library Services that we do an outcomes-based survey, which is like, like I say, 30 seconds worth of questions at the very end. So we would hope you would take our survey at the end. So OK. Well, now I want to introduce Will Stubinja. And Will has been a member of the library development team since 2004. And his primary job is to manage cooperative purchasing contracts with vendors. And he manages the overdrive contact contract, which we call the Washington Anytime Library here. He also manages a contract, a statewide contract with recorded books, and a major statewide contract with ProQuest, uh, which does our databases, our research databases for the state of Washington. And in addition, Will is an avid reader himself who reads in whatever format is the most convenient and usually has two to three books ongoing at one time. So a man ably suited to do this presentation because he wants to read what he wants to read when he wants to read it. So Will, with no further ado, I'm going to turn the uh, presentation over to you. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, Jeremy, should I be hearing an echo of myself? Uh, it might be because you have the second computer loaded up. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Did well, you, let's see if I can deal with it. Do you have both accounts on the same computer? Yes. Yeah, then that's definitely what it is. Um, you, you're going to need a second computer if you want to be able to view it. I do have a laptop over here. Uh, apologies, folks. Um, I have a laptop over here I can bring over there real quickly. That might help. All right, give me a moment. OK. Will, Will is going to do a uh, web sharing tour. So he's actually going to get on the OverDrive system. And so we, we're not depending as we normally do to slides. We're going to do application sharing. And so we noticed that while we do this, uh, we have someone else um, joining us on her phone, which is um, great. So and Samantha is going to be joining us while Will is going to slowly the application share it takes a while to load. And so everybody just have patience while the, I know mine is going round and round and round and not well, loading I haven't yet. Actually, I, I haven't actually loaded it yet. In fact, Jeremy, I'm not seeing my uh, browser on my list again, which I'm not sure why that is. Do I? Maybe it's because I loaded the browser first. I don't know. OK, Should well, I we're going to get it? on. But anyway, I'll go ahead and get started. I have some other things to say. So before I begin, um, let me say that um, if at any point I refer to the Washington Anytime Library or just to the Anytime Library, and I know I will, that's because the name, uh, that's the name of the OverDrive site that I work with on a regular basis. And if you're not a member of the Washington Digital Library Consortium here in Washington State, just substitute your own OverDrive site in its place. And I'm focusing on the new OverDrive interface today. So those of you who prefer to stress access to 
uh, overdrive ebooks and audiobooks through your ILS or through your OPAC will need uh, may need to adjust accordingly. So those are just a couple of uh, starting caveats. All right, let's get started. So a common complaint that I hear, admittedly mostly secondhand, from readers, that is, I hear it from their librarians who use the Washington Anytime Library or another OverDrive site, is that they can never find anything to read right when they need it. It seems like whatever they want to read is always checked out. You can put holds on the things you'd like to read, but that doesn't so solve the problem of finding something to read right now. And that approach, put placing a hold, can backfire too, as it invariably seems like one book becomes available just as you're getting started on or right in the middle of another book. And if you're like me, it may be difficult to finish both books on time. Also, uh, people about to go on vacation or on a trip often want to stock up their favorite reading device with several good books all at once so they'll have plenty to read on their trip, especially since they may not have online access during a long flight or when they're out in the boonies. But invariably, it seems like they can't find anything right then and there that's available for them to check out. So what's the solution? Well, you know, I'm not sure that there is a perfect solution, but I do have some ideas. As an avid bookworm myself who's always reading books, both in print and on my phone, I've come up with one solution that works for me. Now, I don't claim it will work for everyone. But I would encourage you to at least suggest it to your patrons and see if they can make it work for them. And my solution involves using the OverDrive wish list. So whenever I come across a title or an author that looks interesting or that I think I might like to read sometime, or if someone makes a recommendation to me of something they like that they think I might like to, I immediately add that book to my wish list on OverDrive if, if it's available through my library. So how do you add a title to your wish list to just to get started? Well, you have to be logged on, of course. But if you try to add a title to your wish list and you're not logged on, the system will prompt you right then and there to get logged on. So to add a book to your wish list, you simply click on the little bookmark with the plus sign in the middle of it that's located down here at the right-hand corner of every um, title on the OverDrive site. So um, let's say that I want to put this Blood in the Water book on my wish list. I click on the link. It should prompt, well, it looks like I'm already logged in, so you don't have to see me log in. That's good. It, it just put a check mark there, and now I am, uh, I've got that book on my wish list. Now, admittedly, I get lots of recommendations from lots of places all the time. I see reading recommendations coming through on OverDrive's blog, which I subscribe to via email, so I don't have to remember to go to their blog to see their posts. As a librarian, I get emails with book reviews from Booklist and other places like that. I'm on Goodreads. That's where I record my reading just so I can keep track of what I've read myself. And I get recommendations there, too. And, you know, and just like uh, most people, I hear books. I hear about books that sound interesting. They're mentioned on NPR or on other TV or radio shows or, or even perhaps more frequently, an author that I've read before comes out with a new book, and I uh, am aware of it from some source or other, or I'm just browsing around in the Anytime Library for some other reason, and I spot something that looks interesting. Any of those things are immediate opportunities for me to add titles to my wish list. So all of those kinds of sources and activities contribute to my wish list, and I'm always adding more stuff to it. Consequently, there's always way more on my wish list than I can possibly get around to reading right away, if ever. And for me, that's a good thing. So whenever I do need something to read, I can log into my wish list. So let me do that here under my account. I'll find the wish list. I click on it. And there's the book I just added. 
all the books that are available to me say borrow on them. Here are some that aren't currently available, so they show place a hold. But right here at the top, sorry if I make you dizzy with my scrolling, um, I can click on available now and limit just to looking at the things in my wish list that are available now. And you'll notice that I have 92 items currently available to me to check out in my wish list. How many did I have all told? 200. <laughs> that's kind of ridiculous, but that's the, you know, that, that, that's the way it works for me because I keep on adding stuff all the time that I think I might like to read someday. I almost never put holds on anything, um, but re rely almost exclusively instead on my wish list. That's because, as I mentioned before, to me, things always come available from my holds list at the most inopportune times when I'm not really ready to read that book or don't need that book. Now, I'll admit, there is one big flaw to this approach, this wish list approach. I may never get to read that hot new bestseller because it may be a long time before it ever shows up in my wish list as available. Um, and, and so if I'm more interested in reading a specific title and I really want to read that book, then, um, and, and for people who are more interested in specific titles than they are in just finding something good to read, they may not find this approach very satisfactory. For me, as long as I have something interesting to read, well, I'm a happy camper. And if I get around to reading that bestseller a year or two from now, that's probably fine with me. But um, if you really do want that, that particular book, you're going to have to go ahead and put a hold on it and wait your turn. Another a minor annoyance with the wish list is that it doesn't remove items automatically once you check them out. You have to remember to remove them yourself manually. So it's a good idea when you check out a book from your wish list to immediately remove it from the wish list right then and there before you forget. So before I go any further, are there any questions about using the wish list? Or are there any comments or suggestions or any other ideas or, that people have specifically about the wish list? Anybody else's experiences? Um, I this is Carolyn, and I do think that's a good idea. I know I do something of the same thing. I've, I've adapted that to, um, I do something of that in my own uh, library as well. But is there something that, are you going to address how libraries, um, you know, this works really well for people like us who are avid readers and get our, our titles and our lists from, you know, know what we want to read and are constantly on the uh, lookout. But what about the people who, Literally, their idea is to look at the New York Times bestseller list, go in and look for that. Is there a way that libraries can, can proactively be ready for these people who don't have this sort of backup of, of you know, organized organization? Are you going to talk about that a little later? Well, what I'm going to talk about next is uh, the other big drawback to the wish list approach, as I've already mentioned, is it doesn't help your, pay well, even somebody who thinks they'd like to try the wish list approach, it's not going to help them right now today if they've never used their wish list because they don't have anything on their wish list yet. It's going to take them a while to build up a good wish list and to have a backlog of things they're interested in reading marked. So um, you do need something to be able to help people right away. And the main other focus of my talk this morning is to just point out the features of the OverDrive site that are designed to help people find things to read right now, today, if they don't have anything on their wish list. What else can you offer to help people get going? Um, in terms of uh, what you asked, Carolyn, I think I'll get to that a little bit at one point, at least when I talk about um, curated lists and lists that uh, individual libraries can create on their websites for their patrons, which is part of the, the interface itself. So what else can you do to help people get started right now? 
find something to read. And I'm going to just go back to the main Anytime Library. Will, we have a couple of, yes. of questions oh, uh, okay. before you go forward. Sure. So the first one is, how do you remove the item? Can you oh, demonstrate since you're live? Sure. Can you just um, you let me go back to my wish list for a second. You just click the same the same um, bookmark, um, or actually in your wish list it shows here as remove. So you just click remove. Are you sure you want to remove this title? And now it's gone. If you're out on the general site, and we may be, I may be able to demonstrate that in a minute, that little bookmark at the bottom of the uh, book will have the check mark in it. Let's try putting this one on. And then all you have to do is just click that again, and it's off your wish list. So it's that simple. If you're logged in, on, off. Uh, was there another question? Second question was, is there a limit to the number of titles you can have on your list? And if you've got 200, that sounds like it's a pretty high limit. Yeah, I'm not aware of a limit, and I've never uh, encountered even a place to set a limit. So I don't think there is a limit on how many titles you can have on your wish list. Um, I mean, I don't know. I suppose there might be, but like I say, like you say, at 200, I haven't hit it. So I don't think there's any practical limit anyway. And as I say, I don't recall seeing in the administrative aspect of this site even a place to put a limit. I don't know why you would care how many pe how many titles somebody has on their wish list. Okay, thanks. All right, so. Uh, the biggest feature I think that's important to be aware of is, at least on our site, and I, you know, other peop other libraries may have their sites set differently, but <coughs> excuse me, um, we've set all of the featured lists that show up on the site by default or that people can look at to uh, initially show just the available titles. So. Right here at the top of the Anytime Library is a featured collection called You May Have Missed These. And you notice that all four of them that are displaying to begin with are available. And even if I click See All and scroll down, they're all available. This is a deliberate choice on our part to make lots of things and, and to not frustrate people by showing them things that aren't available. So right now, what you see, you can check out. Incidentally, this um, list that we're on, this things you, uh, you may have missed these collection is, um, these are books that, that for which we own multiple copies in the Anytime Library. And all of them, when we, set, when we put the list out there, were currently available. Basically, that means that these were popular a while back, and they were so popular at the time that we had to buy multiple copies to meet the demand and to maintain our desired holds ratio. But now, no one is reading these particular books very much anymore, and there are several copies available for checkout. When we set up this list for the adult uh, the main site, we uh, had at least four copies of every single one of these titles that were available. So if, even if someone checks one out, there's still three more available. Um, that's the adult version. On the kids and teens rooms, we have versions of the same lists, and there were at least two copies of every title available there. So in order to get a decent sized collection. So we're thinking that these are titles that you know people might have um, not gotten around to reading when they were really popular, and uh, let's let let's present them now. But the important thing is we've set all of the featured collections. So if I go back to the main site and I go down below, you may have missed these. We have our just added collection collections, the just the new ebooks, the new audio books. We have recently returned titles. We have read-along books that parents might be interested in uh, sharing with their kids. And all of these 
are set such that the books that are available are the ones that are showing up on the screen uh, first off. On all of these collections, except that very first featured one, there's an arrow here that lets you scroll sideways to see more titles. I think you can see 12 titles without clicking on the See All li uh, link, which will actually then take you to the entire collection. If you go to the See All list, we've set those to be limited currently to 1,000 results, um, which is a lot of titles to be browsing through. Now that I've gone to the complete list for the recently returned, you do see one that's on the wait list. However, you could immediately filter that list to show you only the available now. So it's very simple. Well, I thought I could. It says I'm just showing available now. But I'm still seeing the wait list. I'm not sure why. That's interesting. Well, that's a glitch I haven't seen before. <laughs> Anyway, you should be able to limit it so that you only see what's available now. OverDrive has tried to make that process very easy under the filters. Um, if none of the books that you see on our featured collections appeal to you, you can always, um, if none of the ones you see up front, as I already mentioned, you can always browse more in any of the categories. And there's even more custom lists. If up here at the top you click on collections, under collections, you see more links to the kids and teens site, although those are right there on the main page in our uh, interface. But under ebooks, you see several other lists. And under audiobooks, you see several other lists. So these lists are already filtered by format. Um, you notice down at the bottom of each of those lists, there's a, a, a collection called Try Something Different. This is a similar list to the, um, to the uh, You May Have Missed collection, but it's a little bit different. These are titles that have the audience here in the, in the main collection set as general adult. And then they're sorted by low circulating. So we're showing things that currently are not circulating. And they're filtered to show the available titles first. So this is another way of calling attention to things in our collection that currently haven't been uh, circulating very well to see if uh, by pointing them out, someone might be interested in reading them. Now, I already talked about the fact that if you land on a collection that shows you both available and uh, items that aren't available. There's an example. If I go back to collections and I choose the most popular collection, you're going to immediately see things that are on the wait list. Now, we could have sorted this collection also to just show what's available. But these are the highest circulating items within our collection. And we thought that um, that the would-be reader looking for something to read, um, you might want to see all of the currently popular titles, not just those that are available, if you're just trying to find um, something current. And as I pointed out, you can immediately filter it to show you only the available thing, now things, if that is your preference. Let's see if the filter works this time. For some reason, it's not working on Harry Potter, but it seems to work on everything else. Um, now, we have this most popular list set to um, use just the circulation within the Anytime library to pick what's the most popular. There is also an option when you create a list like this to um, sort by most popular globally, which uses OverDrive's entire customer base circulation stats um, to sort this list by instead of just the things that are popular within our local library. So at some point, if we wanted to change it up, we could uh, switch to that type of a sort to see what else comes out. All right, let's see, where am I? 
On the new version of our site, as I mentioned, uh, most of these lists are automatically limited to the first 1,000 titles that come up. That's still, however, a lot of titles to um, browse through. So consider limiting it still further and point, you know, pointing this out to your users if they're thinking that's just way too much. You know, I, I, I don't want to look through all of those. Under filters, under besides available now, and date added, which lets you sort uh, for the most recently added things to the collection, you can limit uh, by subject here. And we see several subjects that you could limit by. And over at the right, we see the number of titles that you will have out of those thousand books originally picked if you limit to any of those particular topics. And there's a lot more subjects available. If I click more, I can see many other subject headings. And um, over at the right, I can see the number of titles in each one. Some of them are, don't have a whole lot of titles in them. Now, um, admittedly, subject headings are one of Overdrive's weaker features, to be honest about it. Lots of people, especially librarians and those who know something about the science and art of cataloging, have complained about Overdrive's poor quality subject headings. Their defense, Overdrive's defense, when complaints are made about this, is that they're just using the headings that were provided to them by the book publishers. I've had some librarians recently tell me, however, that other, uh, other vendors like Ingram for print books from the very same publishers seem to have better subject headings than OverDrive has. And we could argue that um, OverDrive owes it to its market, which is libraries, to enhance their subject headings to make them a little better. But nevertheless, regardless of how good or bad the subject analysis is, it can be a place to start or a way to focus your browsing onto something that you think might be more interesting to you to read or to your patrons to read. And I want to point out something funny about um, sorting uh, by format. If I go back, let's see, I'm going to start over for a second. And then I'm going to go back to that most popular collection. Um, at this point, if I try to sort by format, and I'm under the ebooks most popular, so it's not showing me audiobooks as an option, you notice that I've got all these different ebook formats which probably aren't going to mean anything to most of your patrons. And I find this a little bit odd. Um, I'm not sure why that filter even needs to be in there. Maybe it does for some people. Um, but I want to point out that if you instead approach subjects, rather than approaching subjects as a filter within one of the existing collections, if you go straight to subjects on the main menu, then you can do a more sensible format between all ebook subjects and all audiobook subjects. In a sense, when you go under collections, that choice has already been made for you because the subject or the collections are divided up by ebook collections versus audiobook collections. And I'm not sure if that's a uh, hard and fast. Um, that's a feature of the new site that I haven't really explored yet. I don't know if you can create collections that have both audiobooks and ebooks in them. It seems like you could, but I'm not sure where they would go. Maybe there would be another column here that would show up with, with those. Looks like there's room for another column. But anyway, I'm just pointing out that if you want to be able to sort subjects by uh, format, you need to do that here under the subjects heading. Okay, recommendations. I'm sure you've noticed that um, any time you look, let's just pick a subject off of here. Let's pick, uh, oh, one, this is one of the subjects that's gotten the most complaints as literature. Um, it's very general and broad. What classifies as literature? And I, I recently had uh, someone, a, a librarian, tell me that they sent in a whole list of recommendations for what should or shouldn't be on the literature list. and 
so far they hadn't seen OverDrive do anything about it. But that is something you can do as a librarian. You can send subject heading suggestions into OverDrive, and they will at least look at them and consider consider uh, implementing them. But I, what I wanted, to, the point I wanted to make at the moment is, if you pick, uh, if you go look at the details for a book, which you do by clicking on the three dots and going to View Details, I'm sure you've noticed that down below the general description of the book, at the bottom of the screen, there's always a list of recommendations you may also like. I don't really know what kind of an algorithm OverDrive is using to generate these lists. That's something I suppose I should ask them about someday. I'm not terribly impressed with it. As, as a reader, personally, I only occasionally see something here that I'm really interested in. But sometimes I do. I, I like books with uh, musical themes. So this dangerous melody book you know, might be interesting to me. I'd have to go read the details to see for sure. But anyway, and you can see a few more by scrolling sideways. Anyway, it's one more way to get recommendations. And these lists are, again, automatically filtered by availability, so only those titles immediately available are usually shown to you, even if you use the See All link. All the titles that come up are available right now for checkout. Now, a caveat. Even with all of these features, that are designed to help the would-be reader find something to read right now, something that's available when the individual needs it or wants it. The fact still remains that if there is a popular book that you really, really want to read, you're probably going to have to put a hold on it and wait your turn and be prepared to take that book when it becomes available. There's just no getting around that. And, um, most libraries, like the Anytime Library, just don't have enough money to buy enough copies so that the book can be immediately available to everyone. We have uh, our holds ratio currently set higher than we'd like. It's set at 7 to 1, which means anytime there's more than 7 holds, we buy another cop on every copy, we buy another copy. Some libraries use a 5 to 1 holds ratio. Overdrive, of course, recommends a 3 to 4 to one holds ratio, but I don't know very many libraries that can afford that. So are there any other questions at this point? I don't know for sure if I'll be able to answer them, but um, I'll try, and if need be, I'll research the, uh, the answers and send them out later. Carolyn, have you I seen have any not. other questions pop not. up so far? Uh, so how um, do we have any... Okay. any does OverDrive have any, have any feedback about how um, effective? I mean, there seems to be a lot of things on the site. Um, so do they have any idea about how many people uh, this works for? Has there been any research? That's an ex that's an excellent question, and in fact, I, that's one of the things I, I asked OverDrive as we were getting ready to launch the new website. I said, you know, okay, so we build these lists. Can we get statistics on how many people are clicking through from these, from these, you know, customized lists that we put up to uh, help people? Or can you tell us how many people are clicking through from, you know, the recently returned list or the... Uh, just added lists or or even these recommendations that you have at the bottom of a, of any given title, and they said, um, <laughs> not really at the moment that's maybe something we can add in the future and i if I were a better expert at using something like Google Analytics, I don't know if that would help me figure it out or not either because these are all uh, such dynamic the kinds of lists, you know, as people check things out, other things become available on the list. I, 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 and I just don't know enough about those types of free um, analytic ser services to know if it would, uh, if we could figure it out from that or not. So frankly, they do not have very good data on that sort of thing at this point. And I've had skeptics within my own um, 
consortium as to whether it's really worth the trouble of putting these lists up. But I think it's better to have them than to not have them. At least there are, you know, well, we're, we're doing our best to try to make things yeah. available. Well, I, I, I agree. I think that there needs to be something, but I was just wondering if it was working. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to know. Now, you know, one thing that I have done, but, but it takes quite a bit of time, um, and I try to do it at least once in a while, is um, when we first put up a new list, I'll go through and see uh, how many titles are in the, in the list, how many of them are available, how many are checked out, and then I'll try to go back and check it again, uh, you know, a week or two or three later and, and, or a month later when we're ready to replace it and see, you know, but, but that I just have to do it manually. I have to literally go in and look at each um, list and see. I can show you how that's, how that's done. It's really pretty simple. Um, if I click on the see all, it shows me that I have 152 uh, books in this particular collection. And if I filter it by available now, it shows me that there are 63. So of the may, you may have missed these, of the 152 in books in the collection, um, all but 63 of them, that's more than half, are checked out. And since there were multiple copies, up to four copies of each of these books, and some had seven, eight, ten copies available, that would indicate that there's been quite a bit of traffic on this particular uh, list. I, that's better than I expected, to be honest. But that's how you can tell. You can go to each of your lists and, and do that same thing, you know, and just very quickly get the numbers on how many of your titles are in the list and how many of them are checked out versus how many of them are available. Um, I'd also like to ask if um, any of you who've been listening today have any other suggestions, any other tips or tricks that you'd be willing to share, anything that's worked for you in helping uh, patrons find things to read right now or, or things that you've done yourself in your own personal reading. I'm not even working front line in a library. I'm here at the State Library. I'm a manager. And I have, it's been a lot of years since I worked. And I never did work a public desk in a public library. I worked a public desk in, a, in a, uh, an academic library. But um, I worked in a public library, but I was a computer systems guy. so. Um, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to get some even better ideas from some of you that have tuned in today than the ones I've been promulgating. So is there anybody who uh, would, might be willing to share an idea? You could raise your hand and we'll, if you've got a mic, you can talk or you can type something into the uh, chat box. Well, I just admit that while we are giving people a moment, I also use the wish list that I have found that to be the best way for me because I have spent, before a trip, I have spent up to three to four hours trying to load enough content onto my device to sustain me through a, a period of time. I'm a voracious, fast reader, and when I'm on vacation, I can go through three books on a six-hour, you know, if you do download three Kojis, and the Koji takes you two hours to read, Koji Mystery, uh, and you have a six-hour plane trip, there's three books right there. So, um, you know, and so the disability, I'm going on a two-hour, uh, two-week trip coming up soon, and, you know, g given the weight of books, <laughs> my husband is very interested in having me find things to load on my device as opposed to uh, put in our luggage and have us weighed down. So the wish list has worked for me. Anyone else? I don't see anybody typing. Um, I, will comment that, I will comment that Carolyn is one of the fastest readers I've ever met. And I think I'm a fast reader, but nothing compared to her. <laughs> OK, well, we do have, uh, Colleen has a question. She says, can you fil filter out romances from the Good question. Uh, Let's see if we fiction. can. Because um, I, I don't know the answer to that right off the top of my head. So. Uh, we want to filter romances out of historical fiction. Um, do we have a... Probably, have to do an advanced I just go to historical fiction, 
Um, I don't think there's any way at this point to further filter. Oh, yeah, because if right. you look at the first and I've got 3,567 results. Now, um, I could filter by another topic. Uh, for example, I could filter by mystery, but I don't necessarily want mystery. So, um, there is. You have to click on the little magnifying glass to even get the search box. And once you get the search box, you can go to advanced. But I don't remember if there is a um, uh, a not feature in here. So once again, I could pick historical fiction. But I don't think there's any way to exclude a subject. Maybe there is, but. That's a good. That's a good point. If I will attempt to research that further, I will. Um, if you put your email address in the chat window, and I get anybody can put their email address in if, if more than the person who asked the question would like an answer, and I will send out what I find. I, I might have to ask somebody at Overdrive about that because there might be a way to do it, and I'm just not aware of it. Yeah, because I was going to say. I totally get that because I mean those were all romances, really not historical fiction. They really, I mean, the, that is a very, it's an excellent right. example. Right. I mean, of how you know, it's, it's just it. a romance set in, it's set in a historical period, and so it gets that both subject headings assigned to it. Yeah, but it really is a romance. We'll, so we'll look into it, and, and, and again, anybody who would like to see whatever answer I find out, even if it is no, there's no way to do that. Uh, just put your email in chat, and I will send any answers to questions I get to all the emails that we got through the chat window. OK. Any other questions? Did okay. anybody want to come up with another tip or trick or um, suggestion? for searching. All right. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit now, as I mentioned before, about curated collections. All of the collections that you see, those that appear here on the start page, some of which we didn't even scroll down to, like we've got a sci-fi romance collection here. We've got a, a uh, erotic romance collection, and plus the collections that we have underneath collections. These are all examples of um, collections that can be controlled by the library. They're what we call curated collections, although some of them, such as the most popular and the just added, are automatically generated collections. So the system is already set up to generate those kinds of collections automatically. But you have a certain amount of control over how they're displayed, um, how they're sorted, what order they're sorted in, uh, and that sort of thing. Um, but you can any topic that you can imagine that you may have some books in your collection, you could create your own curated collection and put it up here. Um, that is, if you have access to the curation uh, part of the administrative module. Um, here at the uh, Anytime Library, um, I think that uh, we, we've been using um, a librarian at OverDrive to put a lot of these up simply because it saves us time. We just, there's nobody here I've been able to get to volunteer to do it. I don't have enough time to always do it myself. We'll suggest topics to her, and she'll then go ahead, go out and create a curated list based on our collection of, of that topic. Or if we like, she'll actually just you know make up the topics herself or use existing topics that OverDrive has. And in fact, in the OverDrive marketplace, um, they have a large number, I think I've got a screen up here, of uh, topics already available to you, lists. Now, their lists, of course, may include things that aren't in your collection, but at least some of the things on their list are probably going to be in your collection. So here's a whole section under collection development. Um, on the OverDrive marketplace of lists 
topics that they have. So, for example, I could pick trending topics and um, get an enormous list of topics that are currently trending, as they say, popular type topics. And if I click on any of these, it's going to dump me into the marketplace and show me all of the titles that they've assigned to uh, these particular lists. And I can then limit those to just the ones that we own, um, put those into a cart, convert the cart to a spreadsheet, extract the, uh, the uh, ISBN numbers, go back and um, create a curated list. Or there's probably better, shorter cut ways of doing it than that, too. But anyway, it's not too difficult to find the ones that we own and create lists curated lists off of any of these kinds of topics. And as I say, the sky is the limit. I mean, Overdrive has hundreds of these uh, lists already made up, but you can make up your own just as easily. And as I mentioned, they've assigned a collection specialist librarian to us who will create these collections for us if we just ask, whenever we ask. All I have to do is tell her what we'd like or what we want. She goes to work, sets them up, and even loads them onto the site for us. So that's very helpful. The main purpose, of course, behind all these featured collections is to drive our circulation, to make suggestions that we hope will result in patrons checking out yet more books and actually reading them. As we have already discussed, we don't have any real good way other than just manually looking once in a while to see how successful the lists are, but I think it's better to have them than not. Um, does anyone who's listening in, um, especially maybe from other library systems, have suggestions for curated or featured collections that have worked well for them? I'm always interested to hear what's working for others. Maybe we'd give it a try, too. So anybody um, got any clever or interesting lists that you created that you'd be willing to mention or share? I think it's interesting that they put adult coloring books on a, <laughs> I guess they printing a lot, but I'm like, really? <laughs> on a digital thing? That, that seems a little weird, but it is a trend. Well, I will say at home, you know, my wife bought one of these adult coloring books, and rather than color directly in the book, I went to my printer and made a, printed it off a copy, and I colored that. <laughs> so I guess, you know, print it, you can print the coloring pages off these books and then color them. Uh, I, I just seems kind of strange, but anyway. Well, these are I I think these are some great ideas that people didn't know about them. This is a good place. Anybody? To, any to other suggestions? I'm not seeing any in chat. So, all right, I'm going to go back to the Overdrive Marketplace for a moment, and um, I want to take this opportunity in the little bit of time we have left to point out some other features that are available for assisting your patrons and helping them make their overdrive experience better. To do these things, you do need an overdrive marketplace and account, but every library has at least one or more staff person, even within our consortium, that has the necessary access. For the Washington Digital Library Consortium, I'm the person who can add or delete marketplace accounts and you would need the permission of your library director or of the person at your library who manages OverDrive uh, for me to uh, set you up with an account. Uh, in fact, I normally expect requests for new user accounts to come from one of those official people at your library. Um, but here on the OverDrive uh, Marketplace Support tab, notice support is, high, is uh, blue to show that that's the tab I'm on at the moment, there are several um, useful functions that you can perform for your patrons. The first one, manage holds. You can um, move or cancel a user's hold on a title. So for example, if a patron legitimately, in your view, missed their chance to download a title that they had on hold, you only get, I forget, what is it, uh, 36 hours or something to download it. 
Um, anyway, if they missed out for whatever reason, and you think it's a legitimate reason, you can certainly reset their position in the holds queue. You, they won't get the book right now because someone else has already probably checked it out, but they could be the next person in line again uh, to get another chance at it when it comes back in, or when the next copy comes back in. You can also return titles for a patron before the end of the lending period. Now, I don't know. To me, it seems very easy to return a title early on your own. I do it all the time. But, but if a patron needs help doing that, you can do it for them here. Merging user IDs, that's an important one. If a patron loses their library card or has been issued a new one or a new ID, then you'll want to do this for them if they use OverDrive because this will allow them to have access to their old wish list on their new uh, ID or um, their holds and their, you know, everything else that they have uh, in their account. So that's an important one as uh, you replace people's uh, cards. And then resetting the download, um, that is for uh, to reset the download link for a title that a person currently has checked out but for which they've exhausted their download limit. That is, it won't let them download it anymore, then you can reset it for them so they can try again if they for some reason couldn't get it to download properly when they were trying before. So those are some important end user support functions and it is possible to create marketplace accounts that only have access to news and support and that don't have access to purchasing books and all of that other stuff so that anyone who works the front line uh, could have access to being able to do these functions here. A little bit further down, I want to point out the help uh, features. This, oh, and the Marketplace User Guide, if you do use Marketplace, um, and I've got the Marketplace User Guide pulled up here. It's a 118-page it's PDF document that explains just about everything there is that you would ever need to know in the Marketplace. And I use this all the time. I press Control-F and type in my uh, search term and um, find you know what topic it is I'm looking for that way. I rarely read through the whole thing. But that's a very valuable document, that Marketplace User Guide. I use it regularly. Um, Overdrive Help, that link right there takes you to the exact same place that if you're on the main page and you click Help here at the top, that's the end user help. Uh, and there is tons of information there. So you can get to it either on the main site or from within um, the marketplace. More important probably is the um, Over, OverDrive Resource Center right here. From the Resource Center, you can get access to marketing materials, staff training materials, collection development, and product information. I'm going to show you some of what's available in marketing. So for example, right here, OverDrive has a holiday marking kit available which you can download. I did that yesterday and took a look at it. It's got um, quite a few different resources, um, both for print and digital resources. The digital resources are designed to be placed on your uh, website and the um, print resources, of which I'm showing you a larger view of this um, holiday one, notice that down here at the bottom it has a place where you can type in the URL of your library's particular OverDrive site. So you type it in there, you print this out on a color printer, you've got a nice flyer to put up about uh, uh, OverDrive. And there are just tons of that kind of stuff that's in here. Uh, the digital resources are, you know, things that you can, graphics that you can stick on your website. Under the communication templates, there are sample press release, newsletter article, radio ad, ideas for social posting on Facebook and what have you, and a getting started email that you could send out to uh, your patrons via email. So there's a lot of marketing resources in here, and I think a lot of people aren't aware of them or don't take uh, advantage of them. These are designed to help you get the word out to your patrons about your OverDrive collection. A frequent research finding by such organizations as the Pew Research Center 
uh, is that many, if not most, library patrons are still unaware of the fact that their libraries offer free downloadable formats such as ebooks and audiobooks. The late, latest study I saw dated September of this year reports that only 44% of those 16 and older say that their public libraries loan out ebooks. Whereas we know that over 90%, probably closer to 95 or 98% of public libraries do offer that service. Um, I see that I'm about to run out of time. I just want to show one more quick thing, and that is uh, the uh, support staff training information. There are lots of little videos for your staff to be trained. A demonstration of the new OverDrive website right here, 28 minutes. If you don't have 28 minutes, download the PDF and just read the key points really quickly. They have PDFs available for most of the um, uh, support videos that they have. So here are some on the app, and then other reading op options, read, listen, Kindle, and finally, um, screen readers in OverDrive, how it is accessible to blind and visually impaired users. And um, live webcasts coming up are listed here. There's one today, later on today at 11 o'clock our time, 2 o'clock Eastern. And there's a one coming up tomorrow and the next day. This last one, helping users enjoy your digital collection, would be useful to any frontline staff member. There are also uh, past webcasts recorded, archived, that you can listen to or look at the PDFs. So I really recommend these uh, resources to your attention, especially as you have staff turnover and new people working at the library. They can spend a few minutes watching some of these. They'll be more ready to assist your patrons. OK, that's basically what I had today. Are there any additional? Uh, any final questions or any additional suggestions that anyone has thought of as we've gone along? Any discussion of what we've talked about today? Any comments or reactions? I'm just going to say thank you. And um, I have learned some things that I didn't know about OverDrive. It's always good to um, hear some things. And now Will has put up his contact slide. So if you want to get in touch with him, uh, that's the way you can do it, either email or via the phone. And so I'm going to say thanks, Will, for the research. And I think that this is going to be very valuable as a staff training. Um, I'm going to send it out to the Rural Library list and, uh, rec and also to the Walt list and recommend that this is great tra training for line staff. So thank you very much for your attendance. and. Uh, I imagine that uh, Will will get back to Colleen with the answer once he finds out from Overdrive. Uh, please so thank you. Please take oh, the survey. survey. Quickly yep. do the survey. I forget. It's so new. That's coming up. Just yes, please do this really quickly. Like 30 seconds won't take you any more than that. So if you will do that before you log out, we'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. And so if you'll do that, that'd be great.